Okay, so this is the continuation of uh, test five, and this is now test six. And in, at the end of uh, test five, we concluded that if the toroid has no magnet, or the tests are showing if it has no magnets, uh, I'm not capable of bringing down the use of the current uh, down to zero, or basically reversing where it's sending back energy to the source. So obviously you see the meter here is also showing a digit here. So again, it's not capable of working without draining. Now the battery is connected. I'll disconnect it just to show you uh, the same test. And as you can see, now this voltage is going down. All right. I don't even have to use my precision meter to see it. You can obviously see there it's going down. It's not capable of keeping the uh, source capacitor bank charged and the other thing is again we're not capable of picking up energy utilizing our coil here so the magnet is obviously doing something and uh, that's what we need to get together and start to experiment uh, on so I had just tuned that uh, basically this toroid with the uh, magnets further weight to meet the exact inductance of this coil so I could show you the difference and the benefit of using a magnet. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reapproach these magnets uh, closer to this uh, toroid because I get a better effect of the energy that I'm capable of collecting at a higher frequency. Alright, so and I'm going to do that now. Okay, we're back. So basically again, what I've done is I've removed one of these uh, plastic uh, sheets that I'm using as spacers and uh, I have the same magnet now but now closer to the uh, toroid which is actually lowering the inductance which will mean in a result we'll have to actually increase the frequency for it to go into resonance. Now the pickup coil is there and let's have a look here at the uh, scope shot. Let's turn this light off here. So this is what we have as far as frequency that it's uh, resonating at, uh, 34 kilohertz. And uh, this here is the voltage that's uh, driven here at the um, MOSFET. And that's very important actually. Uh, if you overdrive the MOSFET or you underdrive, underdriving is a problem for sure, uh, but overdriving is also going to reduce the uh, ability to be able to see this uh, effect as well. So we're going to have to look at that as well closely because that's what was happening between the difference of my 555 circuit and the SG35 or 3525. Yeah. And uh, this here is the voltage uh, across the uh, pickup coil and the RMS voltage across that pickup coil. And there is the uh, uh, scope uh, shot here. I'll change the time base here to get a little better look at the uh, so this is basically the what's coming out of my signal generator that probe is across my signal generator okay and this is the probe across the pickup coil uh, okay and uh, there's the difference so this is what we have on our uh, pickup coil we've got uh, 0.63 volts so obviously it's uh, much more than our previous test so the higher frequency is helping out here and uh, we're still using the same voltage we're at 16.68 the same uh, connection there and as you can see now we've got actually a minus here because look what we have we have minus uh, 60 uh, microamps uh, going now back to the battery so if I now hook up to check the voltage that the uh, is going back, okay, there is the voltage at that point, okay, and what I'll do now is just disconnect the battery, and now have a look at the voltage. See it uh, climb very fast now, as well, and you can see it. It reflects on this meter as well. So that's quite a bit of energy going back. And we also have this pickup here of that energy. And that, again, like I said, can only happen because of that magnet that's there. So um, 
that's interesting there. Um, now, the voltage going, I'm reconnecting here the, to measure our voltage across our uh, precision resistor there. So as the voltage is climbing on the capacitor bank, okay, without the battery connected, um, the circuit characteristic change. So you have to continuously doing, be doing some micro tuning as this voltage is going up to keep the re resonance happening to get the optimum effect. Now there's another thing that could uh, help as well and that's again the amount of voltage that is being sent to the MOSFET itself, to the MOSFET uh, gate. So here I'll give you a demonstration. If I change that, if I start increasing that voltage, okay, I'm increasing the output here of my signal generator. See now how just increasing it a bit has now changed the amount of energy that is really uh, collecting. So uh, that's to the experimenter's uh, decision to play around with the voltage, but you have to make sure that you're triggering your gate correctly so you really truly have a pulse happening at your coil. So you have to make sure that that's kept. So at this point in time, we're at uh, 7.81 volts, okay? And uh, I can continue increasing it and I can bring it to 8 volts most likely. But as I keep increasing it, now suddenly now we're into the positive side. So now our charge on the capacitor might start working itself down. But at this reading, I know that it's going to stay about stable at, you know, at four or five. Uh, it's not going to drain. It's probably at the neutral point now. And, um, but then you can start playing with the frequency. So I can change, you know, the frequency slightly. So that's worse, increasing frequency. So then dropping frequency. Then see, again, now I can bring it in minus four, minus five. And now I can adjust the gain again a little bit, give it more juice, okay? So, but see how it's so tight. This is a micro frequency adjustment here. So again, you know, you see how sensitive it is. So right there, again, it's, it's balanced, okay? And now we've actually, you can see our gate voltage has increased a lot. We'd actually have to bring down the uh, volt uh, division now to be able to see it completely. And if we look at the data, we're now at 8.9 volts, okay? So I'm definitely not under driving the gate, I believe, and, uh, and we're still getting that effect, okay? So that's a very interesting part. Now the other thing that I'll do right now is I won't change anything right now, okay? All I'm going to do is stop the camera and attach my probes, okay, against the drain and, uh, and the source of the MOSFET to measure how much energy there is right there. I'm not going to change anything, so let's do that now. So I have to go quickly now. I've taken away my probe from the uh, signal generator and I installed it here between the source and the drain of the MOSFET, all right? So in order to measure how much now of the uh, gate voltage is leaking between the source and the MOSFET, to me that's the only area where it can come, uh, the energy. And this is the scope shot of what it looks like, okay? And that's now on uh, one volt division. And there is the data. We have three volts uh, peak to peak, okay, at the most, which is 562 millivolts, which is a very small amount of energy. And I'm kind of puzzled to think that this amount of energy is capable of charging our uh, capacitor bank uh, the way it has been doing. So uh, if somebody can explain that one to me, uh, that would be very interesting because if we only have about three volts peak to peak here uh, that's you know leaking from the uh, from the gate between the drain and the source 
uh, how can we uh, maintain our 18 volts uh, and plus uh, climbing uh, because I've had that over 18 volts and I know it uh, can get to there. So that would be great if somebody could explain that. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Bye now.